and welcome back to my channel again. Hi, my name is Kelly Chimbemina and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my entire filming setup, how I set up my camera, my lenses, my audio, everything I use in creating like this entire production. I'm gonna be taking you guys behind the scenes and I'm gonna try as much as possible to be as in-depth as possible. If you're someone who is just trying to create video content, maybe even beauty video content as well, um, this video is definitely something you wanna watch. I'm gonna be showing you guys my tips, my tricks, and just basically everything that I use in creating my content. So yeah, if that sounds like something you might be interested in, then definitely do keep on watching. Woo! All right, so I'm gonna be taking you guys behind the scenes as well as sharing with you guys all of my equipment, what I film with, how I set up. I'm gonna show you guys and tell you guys so that way you guys have a, a clear understanding of what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna break it into sections. I'm gonna talk about my camera, my lenses, my audio, my lighting, memory card, you know, battery, all of that. I'm gonna give you guys the tea, the details and everything. So the first thing I want to start off is obviously the basic and that's the camera. Now the camera that I'm using and that I've been using for, for maybe three years now, 2017. I've been using this camera for three years now and this is the Canon T6i. If you're in the US, it's called the T6i. If you're in the UK, it's called the 750D. I've been using this camera since I first started and it's just been amazing. Um, I love this camera because it records in HD. It has a flip out screen, it's beginner friendly, it's also affordable and it, it's like a touch screen. A lot of things I love about this camera and I would definitely recommend this camera for someone who is beginning off. If you do have a bit more room for improvement in terms of your camera, I would advise you to get either the 80D or the 90D or the T7i because they're like the latest versions compared to this one. But yeah, it's amazing, it shoots amazing quality and I totally absolutely love it however if you're someone who is starting off i want you to pay less attention to your camera body and more focus on your lens because your lens the glass the glass on your on your camera is what determines literally your quality right whether it has a low f-stop just the glass on your camera is what determines the quality full stop like for, for, forget it for, forget it if you want to invest in something right now invest in either your lighting and your lens and i'm going to talk about this later on um so for the lens that i'm using right now i use the sigma 30 mm 1.4 lens this lens is amazing i'm in love with it as in I feel like if you're someone, I'll probably have a video on lenses for beginners and cameras for beginners, but uh, I feel like this one is the most budget friendly yet quality lens that you can get in the market now for anyone who is trying to create like beauty content. 50 mm is amazing. I do have one, but I feel like sometimes it could be a little bit restrictive in terms of how cropped in it looks, but especially using a, a crop sensor camera like I'm using. But yeah, um, 30 mm is amazing. I can use it for like a sit down talk and then I can also use it for like a makeup tutorial. Maybe I just move in closer. But again, the downside is that it is a fixed lens. You cannot zoom in or zoom out. However, it has a low f-stop of 1.4. That way we can get like this blurry background that we're seeing here. And it's amazing. And this one's even as blurry as it could get. It can get really blurry because I'm on f1.8 and it can go down to f4.4. So just think about that. Um, I love this lens. I recommend this lens to anyone who is starting off. It's a great lens, it's a beautiful lens, and the glass is just amazing. I have another lens. Other lens that I have is the, as the young know, 50mm 1.8 lens. If I'm trying to film like a beauty tutorial and I need to be up close, I use this one. This is a dupe for the Canon Nifty 50. Canon 50mm 1.8. It's a dupe for it. It's like half the price or one third the price. I got this. Three years ago when I first started, I was on a strict budget, right? So this one did the job for me, still does the job for me. And I'm thinking of getting this 
in the Canon one. Maybe I'll just get it sometime. But yeah, I'll let me just fix this up so you can see the difference in terms of how cropped in this is. Again, this is a 30mm lens that I film with and I'm filming it with now. Let me switch this over so you guys can see what this one looks like. Okay, so I just switched my lens now to the 50mm one. This is what the 30mm lens looks like. It's quite heavy, but it's not as heavy as compared to other ones, but I love it. It's sharp, it's affordable. It's not really affordable, but for someone who is beginning off, it's something that you can definitely invest in and, and not regret it, right? For beauty content. Now, this is what the 50mm lens looks like. This lens is the most affordable lens in the market. It's, I think, about $40 or about $45. It is so inexpensive, but you get a decent amount of quality out of it. This is what I'm looking like now. And I use this for my beauty tutorials because of how up close it is. However, because of its 50mm, it's kind of restrictive, right? You need to have like a decent size room to work with it. Um, but this is what it looks like. If you're someone who is trying to film beauty content, I would advise you to get either this one or this one. Anything aside from, okay, you can get the 40mm lens, 30mm, 35, 40, 50 that's the least anything lower than that it's going to be too wide and anything higher than that is going to be too cropped in and if you're beginning i want to assume that you have like a restricted space so yeah these two this one 30 35 and 40 and 50. so 30 35 40 50 stick within that range and you would get like the best but this is what the young new one looks like i think it's decent it's been working for me for a while now and i'm, I'm i love it actually i like i really do like it um, we still get like the blurry background with this lens because it goes down to 1.8 again. It's amazing. I look amazing. I feel amazing with this and yeah, that's what it looks like. And just so you know, I can't even touch my camera. That's how far it is and this is how it is. And I think this is a beautiful lens for beauty tutorials. Remember, if you're filming beauty tutorials, you don't need anything that would... You don't need anything more than this. Literally, this is what you need for beauty tutorials. Like this is the, I feel like 50 mm is the perfect lens for beauty tutorials, depending on your room anyways, but it crops you in, it crops your face in. And for beauty tutorials, you need your face to be cropped in because you're doing like eyeshadow. I don't want to be doing eyeshadow and then I'm like 10 meters away from you. No, I want you to be up, up close so you guys can see the entire thing. So now that I'm like right here, whatever I'm doing on my face, you guys will definitely see it. So beauty videos should be like this. Anything below or above that is just a waste of space. You, no one needs to see your boobs or your thighs or your legs or your, no, no. Focus right here. And that's why I love this lens because it just focuses right here. Okay, cool. So let's just talk about something else. Okay, yeah, so my advice would be to invest more in your lens focus on investing your lens and in your lighting these two will determine like invest in your lens and your lighting it's everything trust me i want to quickly talk about my lighting and what i have going on so where do i even start from okay so um i i go a little bit ham with my lighting because I know that lighting makes a whole lot of difference. You can have the most expensive lens, but if your lighting is not good, it will look cheap. So my advice is to invest in your lighting. I'm gonna show you guys what I have going on and explain to you guys why I have that going on as well. So um, this space used to be my dad's um, office lounge area that I converted into my studio and filming setup. Now, the, the lighting wasn't, maybe I'll look for clips and add it to this so you guys can see the before and after. But it was just basic, like the walls were yellow. Um, yeah, if the walls were cream or yellow, I had to paint everything white. And that's something I'll talk about again, lighting and white white and light oh white light white light oh, okay okay so white and light are like best friends white and light are like best friends and that's what they sound like yeah <laughs> i know what i mean but white and light are your best friends um they're best friends so painting your wall white if that could be an option for you it literally would change your game and it changed my game i remember i used to film in a, my, my room used to be pink i look for a v i'm putting here my room my room used to be pink and i filmed with that and it was just oh it was just just it was cute yeah but not cute on camera uh, until i painted it white because i filmed in my room for at least a year i painted it white and it just everything just changed 
I painted here white as well, everything just changed. So my advice is to get yourself a white background or something white or like paint your room white and white reflects, white bounces the light as well. Sorry. Yeah, and white reflects light, white bounces the light as well. So with white, you kind of get like a brighter effect, right? So talking about lighting, um, in my ceiling, in total we have nine lights in my ceiling. Sounds like a lot, but the brighter the better. So now my studio lighting, I divided it into two sections, right? We have the front lights, which is what I'm filming with right now. And this one focuses on me. And then we have the back lights, right? Don't worry, I'll show you guys everything as I'm talking. Um, the front lights, I have two soft boxes and a ring light. That's like the standard um, filming setup for most beauty gurus, I mean most beauty YouTubers. But then I have another LED light that just adds warmth to my body and glue to my body as well. So I have four lights in front of me, right? This is basically where I film. This is my filming setup over here. Um, like I said, I do have two soft boxes here. One ring light there and one LED light. That's like a yellow light. It's amazing. It makes me glow. I have this reflector panel right here. I have my mirror here. Sorry if it's a mess. I just filmed. I'm actually filming this video. And that's why I have all this um, going on. My batteries are here because I just showed you guys my microphone, everything. So it's kind of a mess. But this is typically how I will film. I have that reflector right there to bounce the light. This thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. This thing. Ah, get yourself one of these reflector um, stuff. This is basically is what I use this as my diffuser. I always make sure that my lighting is soft and evenly diffused. Um, I have my laptop here connected to my DSLR camera so that way um, I can control everything that goes on here. Again, if you want to know how I do that, I'll leave the link over here to so check that out as well. But this is typically how I would film and this is typically my setup just in case you guys are wondering. This is my setup. This is what I see. And this is what you guys don't see. <laughs> and this is basically how I set up my front camera. Okay, my front lighting. That is my front light, okay? So something else that I added is this reflector panel. It's like a reflect, you know guys, this reflector panel right here, reflector board, I just added it on my table and what this is going to do is that it bounces light on me. I'll have the link right here again so you guys can understand what I'm talking about. This just makes me glow. Watch this video, please, just watch this video. I'm trying to achieve like a 180 degree lighting, right, so like, right here 180 like this so everywhere is covered so i don't have any shadow anywhere everywhere is perfectly illuminated now my back lighting and this is something that i started doing i think last year this makes a whole lot of difference if you want your videos to look like you're filming in the morning or you have like if you want it to look really bright and really like attractive backlight would change your game and everything and it would be it's just amazing right so for the back side is what you guys see. Does that make sense? This is what my backlight looks like. I have one LED panel here. I actually have three lighting system going on behind me. I have one LED panel that you probably not seeing. It's over here, right here. And I have this on this table, basically to illuminate this table. That is a young no. 216 light. It's a spotlight. This is what it looks like. And I have this LED panel over here. So it makes this area right here. This one is also from Youngno. This is the Youngno YN600L. Yeah, let me turn it off and on. Off, on. Can you see how it just makes my background really bright? And this is a hack that I use in making my background really, really bright. And I have another panel that I DIY'd right here. And this just illuminates this area so that way here doesn't look dark and it also illuminates me when I'm filming because I always sit behind that. So this is what my backlight looks like and this is what you guys basically see when I'm recording. So this is what you see and that is what you don't see. <laughs> okay. It's what the panel that I DIY'd a while back. I was trying to um, create like a halo effect in the back of my backdrop. So I DIY this one. And this is just like my LED panel. I had one extra LED panel remaining. So I just DIY it. What I did was just to add like a, a plug to it. So I just connected it literally by myself. And now this is 
another light that I use for my backlight. I just put it right there because around that flower side, there's a bit of like a shadow going on there. So I put it there to illuminate that backlight, to illuminate that area and also like give me like a bit of like a halo right here because this is where I typically sit down. Let me show you guys when I put it back and you guys will see the difference. But this is how I did it. I typically, I'm supposed to put this up at the back of my chair. I'm such a DIY girl. This was how I made it to be, right? So that way my, the back would be illuminated if I'm filming with like a plain background. But because I'm not filming with a plain background, maybe I'll do another video on that. Let me know if you guys want to see how to create like a halo, how I do this, how this works. But I don't film with that anymore. So I'm using this to illuminate my background. Let me show you guys what it looks like with it again. Okay. So this is what it looks like now with that light. It just illuminates that area right there and it kind of makes this area really bright and I absolutely love it. Um, that's it for my lighting guys. Um, the light that I'm using is, the ring light that I'm using is from Nuwa. I'll leave the link in the description box. But the LED panels that I'm using are all from Yongluo. Guys, they are so powerful and it's, oh. I can't even explain. They're so powerful and it's just it's just amazing for videos. Like it, the 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 color rendering index is so high. I think it's at 98. That's how accurate the whites and the colors are. So that way you don't get like a green tint or it's just it's just perfect lighting, right? Uh, I'll leave it in the description box. I think I got it for like was it like seventy dollars? There about there is the you can get that one young new or the newer one that the two brands that i currently have and i can kind of like trust so yeah um it has a remote here it has a remote here so i can control like the lighting so i can turn it on turn it off and just control the entire scene and it just makes everything so efficient All right, so I want to move on to a microphone and audio. Guys, I remember the first um, video I made, I think last two years on my filming setup. I'll probably link it somewhere here. Ah, oh, God, we have come a long way. Definitely come a long way. My audio sucked. Um, I used to use a shotgun mic on my camera. And because I used to film with the 50 mm lens, I was now like, I had to sit far away from it. And something I want to advise you is when you're starting up a video, right? When you're starting up a YouTube channel or you're trying to create um, content, um, the visuals is 50%, the audio is 50%. Now, when you're talking about the visuals, we're talking about the camera, the lens, the lighting, all of that makes up what the visuals, right? The visuals, what you're seeing now, is 50% of the content. The remaining 50% is what you're hearing. Now imagine if I'm talking like this. Right? Imagine watching a video like that and you cannot really hear what the person is saying. Like it's going to be, it's going to be distracting, right? So in as much as you're investing in your camera, your lens, also make sure to invest in your audio, right? And I started off filming with this mic right here. This is the Rode Video Mic Go. I never use this mic again, except I, maybe I want to vlog, but I don't even vlog with my camera. Now the thing with this mic is that um, you need this to be on the DSLR camera. A hack is to get it as close to you as possible. You can get like those boom mic um, arm hand those boom arm um what's it called the boom arms right for microphones you can get that and i feel like that would have just been a lot of work for me because i have a lot of things going on in my studio so what i'm using right now is this this thing is so budget friendly it's the boya lavalier mic this is what it looks like i use this on my dslr camera i use this on my laptop and I also use this on my mobile phone. It works on all devices. I think it has its rating somewhere here. But yeah, yeah, okay. So it has a rating at the back. So it works for camera, DSLR, mobile phone, laptop. So it works for everything. And that's what I'm currently filming with. Um, 
that's what you guys are currently listening to again everything i'm using would be linked in the description bar everything will be in the description bar so my advice for you is to get a lavalier mic especially if you're creating content like this i try to restrict myself from having my microphone on my table because i don't mean i film beauty content and the thing with filming beauty content is that your work area can go from like from clean to like messy in that in one second right so i try to limit myself from having my microphone on my table because i feel like there's going to be a lot of noise a lot of distractions a lot of things going on i'm going to be picking up so i don't want anything regarding microphone on my table except i'm filming a video like this where i'm calm i'm talking to you guys and that's what i have to do but for makeup there's a lot of things brush but i don't know no get yourself a lavalier mic or hang it above you so that way it doesn't interact with your work area because having it on your table while recording trust me it's going to be really messy except your extra extra tidy which i don't think anyone is ever tidy with makeup because it, a lot of things are just going on okay so get a, get yourself a, a lavalier mic this lavalier mic is so long that if i want to go at the if i want to go like to the end extreme end of the wall i would be able to do that look at that i mean we still have i think this is about i don't know how many meters but it's quite long this is what it looks like i still have a lot of rope to unravel and i can literally just i can go as far back as the wall and i still have more to unravel so i mean this for me works for me except i want to invest in something better and bigger but for now i'm loving this mic it's it's cost effective it is i think i got it for like 20 dollars actually 19 dollars something cents but it was very affordable um if I, if you can get your camera for 500 dollars 1000 dollars then you can definitely invest in your mic do invest in your mic it is really important invest in your audio this is like one of, i think one of the best affordable mics in the market so i'll leave it in the description box so do check it out if you're interested in getting this as well so now that we've covered mic um audio is really important if you want quality content do not again i repeat do not use the inbuilt um, microphone on your camera don't do don't even play yourself don't do that except you're vlogging and the camera is here and you're here but if you're far away from the camera don't anything that regards audio make sure the audio is at least arm's length from you right so arm's length in the sense <laughs> arm's length in the sense that the audio cannot be your microphone cannot be farther than your arm right you should be able to touch it because the voice because the audio can only pick up what you can hear so if you're using a boom mic make sure it is arm's length make sure it's not far it's not too far away from you so it should be somewhere here out of the camera but it should be somewhere here as close to you as possible if you're using um a table if your microphone is on the table make sure it's as close to you as possible not farther than your arm's length but for me I use a lavalier mic and it is literally on my shirt my dress shirt and I like that it's showing because it's picking up a lot of my voice I don't need to shout for you guys to hear what I'm saying I, I'm talking like my normal calm voice but if I don't want you guys to see the mic I could always just tuck it in in a way that you guys would not see it just hide it in plain sight and I'm good to go right I'm still talking it's inside I'm gonna say it's inside me but it's inside my shirt and you guys can hear me vividly I hope um, yeah so that's it for mic don't a uh, rule number one your mic should not be further than arm's length away from you so if you're using the mic on your digital camera no I'd rather advise you to take your phone use the voice recorder on your phone it is one million times better than that one on your camera so use a voice recorder on your phone and sync it while doing post-production again audio is very important something i had to learn one year later but now that you're watching this and if you're learning invest in your audio trust me i will not mislead you so next up is the memory card right memory cards oh jesus lord you can never have too much memory card especially if you're creating video content this is one that i use right here it's from sandisk um i do want to advise for you to get the ones that are i think they are called h or sdhdc i think 
SDHC, I don't know what it's called, but gets um okay, so gets a memory card that can record at least HD quality content. And when you do your research, you'll find out that there are some memory cards that cannot like take in HD content because they are so heavy and they are so um it's a lot of data. So do your research. I would have a couple of mine that I use linked down in the description box. So do check it out if you're interested again. But for size wise, I would advise you to not go below 32 gigs. This thing that I'm saying, if you're buying a memory card, don't go below 32 gigs. Start from 32, 64, 128 and above, right? Don't go below 32 because 32, I think 32 records, I think two hours, 30 minutes or two hours, 15 minutes or two hours roughly worth of video content in HD. For videos, don't go below 32 gigs. Thank me later. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying thank me later, but yeah, I, I, I think I have, I had one, um, eight gig and uh, that one, like, ah, uh, stressed the hell out of me. I had to remove it, put it inside, transfer it to my laptop, take it back, delete it. Ah, oh, no, no. So just learn from my mistakes, guys. Don't go below 32 gigs. Okay, cool. All right. So something that I love as well, and something that you notice in my video if you're watching it right now are these lights right here these are actually christmas lights and i don't know i've talked about this a couple of times i have two types i have the warm one that i kind of draped like fairy curtain lights i'll put everything in the description box but you can always google or check amazon or wherever you're buying it from but these are the fairy lights i just like hang them behind my curtain so that my curtain softens it up and it kind of hides the the strings if that's yeah if the strings then i have another one in a um fish bowl right here and i kind of i look can you see how it's looking out of focus but then it's blurry but then you can see like that bouquet ness going on it's actually just christmas light that i put in a glass and that's what we're getting there so i just I, i'm a diy girl in case you guys don't know that yet i'm a sucker for diy so i kind of like just diy my entire studio everything is quite affordable the glass vase over there with the flower the the pillow over there and and some flowers as well so just kind of figure out what your brand is what your theme is i'm kind of going towards like a rose gold blush pink white kind of vibe and that's what you kind of see around here blush pink rose gold and that's basically it um okay, so next up i want to talk about batteries and depending on the kind of content you're creating and where you're also creating this content there are two alternatives that I would highly, highly advise you to do. So if you're creating like an indoor content, I would more than highly advise you to get this AC adapter um, batteries. What it does is that it connects, this plugs into your DSLR camera. I have two, this one I think, I don't know what to this one. But this plugs in, into it slots in into your DSLR camera and this connects to the wall. So you can run your DSLR camera for hours, like literally hours. I do this almost, I won't say every day, but every time I'm recording, I record for hours. So slot it into your DSLR camera and connect it to your wall. As long as you have light, electricity, you can record as long as you want, right? This I would definitely advise you to get if you're creating indoor, in-house content. However, if you're trying to create content outdoor, you need to get yourself extra batteries. I have three batteries right here and I use this whenever I want to take like a, like a photo shoot outside or maybe I want to vlog outside with my, with my camera, which I hardly do. But anytime I need to take my camera outside my house, you, you need to get yourself extra batteries. So if you see yourself recording content outdoor, get yourself extra batteries, at least three, okay? Get yourself extra batteries or if you don't have this or if you don't feel like buying this you always need extra batteries it will make your entire filming process like more productive and more efficient there's nothing as bad as recording oh god <laughs> i never I'm, I'm just remembering things like i remember when i first got my camera i had no idea of like what to get what not to get and i had just one battery right so i would film and then it would only last for like 40 minutes and i was doing like makeup tutorial so i would film for like 40 minutes maybe when i'm trying to set my concealer or my foundation or something and my battery would go off so then i'll now have to remove the battery charge it for like another 40 minutes 
they now come back and record. I mean, that could literally demoralize you if you're someone who's trying to be motivated to record. So to eliminate all of that, get yourself extra batteries or better still, get yourself these AC adapters if you're recording in-house and it would literally change your life. Thank me later. And then I tell you, thank me later. Just know that I'm saying something that will change your life. So thank me later. <laughs> um, this is basically my entire filming setup. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys loved about it. And everything again will be linked in the description box just so you guys can have an idea of what I'm talking about. In case you guys still want to know what I'm talking about or in case you guys want to buy it. Um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, I'm excited. You guys have asked me for this video for a long time and I'm guessing it's because of the quality and a quality I do owe it to the lighting and to the lens as well. Everything, I mean with the background and the way I like, did it. But you guys saw the behind the scenes. You can have like an idea of it and then you can repl replicate your own Add your own taste to it, add your own preferences, your own brand, and just recreate your own studio if that's what you're looking towards. I'll see you guys in my next video. Check my other videos. I have a lot of videos on creating content, on setup, camera settings, literally everything and anything. And I'm gonna have like the playlist somewhere linked here. So do check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are. Again, I'm Kelechi Mbemana and I'm focused on helping female creatives build grow their influence as well as their online brand through content like this so yeah um i want to empower you if you're a female creative and you don't know how to start off with creating beauty tutorials hair tutorials fashion tutorials i'm going to be showing you guys i'm going to be spilling everything i'm going to be teaching you guys basically everything um i've been dramatic well yeah um i'll definitely see you guys in my next video but before you leave don't forget to stay fabulous and stay blessed bye guys i'll see you guys in my other one check my other video okay